Thank y'all for tuning back in to your favorite channel. The channel that's going to give you the most. PBK9's Dog Talk, Dog News. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel, man. A lot of y'all brothers ain't subscribed, but you watch it. Go ahead and hit that button. It's totally free. You know we got the membership if you want to be a member. Haven't dropped any videos on it, but I'm charging for that. You know, just subscribe to the channel. It's totally free. Hit that like button up. Don't forget to drop down in them comments. Big salute to them brothers and sisters that be rocking in the chat. All my brothers and sisters that be in the chat from one side of the world to the other side. Big salute and big shout out to all the dog lovers across the world. You know, from the top to the bottom. We got dog news and dog talk for the day. We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, uh, learn, a, learn a few things together today, man. Let's learn a few things together today. And, and big salute to all the dog lovers, like I said, across the world. You know, um, I'm going to start this thing off, you know, we're talking about, well, I'm going to tell you like this real. We're going to start off with some news. But I'm going to tell you what we're going to get to talking about in a minute after that news. You know, so y'all can ponder on this. Champion Jeep and uh, Hargrove's Outlaw. You know, I'm thinking it's Grand Champion Outlaw. All right. Champion Jeep and Hargrove's Outlaw. You know, we'll talk about it in a minute. And what I want to say is, which one do you think, if you could breed one of them, which one would it be? Jeep or Outlaw? Both dogs bred similar. One may be... Folk may consider that one dog is bred better than the other, you know. But we'll get to talking about that. We'll get to talking about that because I want to get kind of deep into it. Got a little bit of news I want to go ahead and jump, you know, knock on off. And we're going to talk about a whole bunch of things today, man. We're going to talk about a whole bunch of things. All right, we got an Ivanhoe man, you know. The Ivanhoe man arrested after his pit bulls was chained up in – what they would consider horrible conditions. You know what I'm saying? So I'm going to let y'all get into that that news article and understand this is the week where we're going to go live with my brothers and we're going to call these news companies and ask them why they do the news the way they do the news, you know, so y'all can get some kind of understanding when y'all see other news channels and you might see a brother who look like you doing the news. You know, you're also used to seeing one type of person standing up there giving you the news. You think that's the only way the news is supposed to come? <laughs> like I tell you, some going to like it and some ain't, man. Ivanhoe, let's get into it. Ivanhoe, a man has been arrested after being accused of abusing animals. Ivanhoe city officials found eight dogs suffering in the sweltering summer heat today. They say the pops were chained up without enough food, water, or shelter. The dogs are now being cared for, though, by the Fol Polk County SPCA. Operations Lieutenant Stephen Lemons from the Ivanhoe Police Department says he helped coordinate the rescue and that the department was tipped off by folks in the community. Tonight, Malcolm Lewis is being charged with cruelty to non-livestock animals. I hope everybody had a great, safe 4th of July. Having a great, safe 4th of July. Um, be careful around them animals. Be careful around them kids. Be careful around your family with them fireworks. You know, and have a great time. Um, you know, we're going to get into the next article. We're going to Collinsville where we got a man charged with animal cruelty because he left his dogs in the sun. Now, that's one of the topics we're going to speak on about tonight as well because we're going to learn together. We're going to learn together what's the difference between animal cruelty and dog fighting. Is there a difference? We're going to speak about that and learn about that together, you know, because everybody have different opinions, and we're just going to lay it out there and talk about a few things, you know. Like I said, um, Collinville man charged animal cruelty after he left his dogs in the sun. And, you know, uh, the neighbors, as you're going to see in the video, the neighbors saying, you know, the dogs are friendly. They ain't have no complaints about, you know, the dogs themselves. But um, I guess it was just – Leaving the dogs in the heat, you know, when, especially when you have um, no shaded areas for the dogs to go in um, or no trees, anything like that. Uh, and it just get hot, man. It just get hot. And cars and stuff like that be, being triple digits, you know, you could just go go sit in your car. If you don't go in, inside of your car until like 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon and you just go open the door and sit inside of it. It's going to be a hundred and some degrees inside that car, you know. So, and them dogs, it don't take them long, you know, 
anything, any human, any a human or dog, anything living, it wouldn't take long for them to die in a, in a car with the windows up in that heat. So uh, let's go to Collinsville and check this whole situation out. Leaders charge a Collinsville man with felony animal cruelty after Collinsville police say they found 10 dogs in a hot shed without access to any kind of AC or clean water. That's before this week's heat wave. Thanks for joining us at 930. I'm Craig Day. And I'm Tatum Gwynn. News on 6 is Caitlin Deggs is live with the latest on the investigation and reaction from neighbors. Caitlin. Craig and Tatum, Collinsville police tell me if someone didn't call the police at the exact time that they were called back in May, the dogs could have died within a few hours. The 10 pit bulls are now at the Collinsville Animal Shelter while the case makes its way through the courts. Tulsa County prosecutors say Rayford Hawkins left the dogs in a hot shed last month with contaminated water and no way to get out and cool down. He's charged with three felony counts of animal cruelty. Jason Patton and his son live nearby. They say they would walk by the house and they say the dogs were friendly. But hearing that someone so close isn't treating their animals right, that sucks because I mean, we usually try to look out for each other around here pretty hard. Collinsville police say when temperatures get to be this hot, it's important to make sure outdoor animals have a way to get cool and that their water is in the shade. When they are wild, they find access to cool water and shade. And when they are limited to a backyard or to a shed, they have no way to seek cooler temperatures. Police Chief Matthew Burke says if you see animals outside that you think aren't being taken care of, call police. Please just be, be aware of these animals and the temperatures. Jason hopes others will learn from this case. People need to be more responsible with their dogs on all levels, let it be neglect or just having that many dogs in general. I mean, obviously it wasn't where they needed to be and people weren't doing the right thing. And Hawkins was arrested, but is out on bond. His next court date is set for Friday. Caitlin Daggs, Oklahoma's own News on 6. Several business owners are now before we get into this last piece of news, you know, I did, you know, I was just Googling something, seeing who the most heroic dog was across the world and the most heroic pit bull was across the world. And of course, you know, who's still uh, leading the way when it comes to her heroic pit bull was uh, Sergeant Stubby and the dog Togo was leading the way when it came to the world's most heroic dog. And for those who don't know who Togo is, the dog who went and picked up the serum in Alaska way back in the days when they had that um that virus going around um in that little city. But uh Togo was the world's most famous. Stubby was the pit bull's most most famous pit bull in the world. You know, um and if you haven't seen that that movie Togo, check that out. That's a that's a real good movie, man. Real good movie. Um but yeah, we're gonna get into this next piece of news. We got a brother who's back in jail for setting his dog on fire or he set his dog on fire before um i don't know if it was before or now but he's back in jail you know what i'm saying so y'all check this article out pbk9 dog talk and news y'all don't forget to hit that like button up you know and like i always say if you want to donate to the channel cash app dollar sign pelican bay kennels capital p capital b capital k or hit me up um in the super chat you know what i'm saying e either way you know, um, all donations are appreciated. And like I said, let's get into this news. Man sets dog on fire. Potentially setting Riona the dog on fire is back in custody tonight. Action News 5's Walter Murphy has the latest about this case that's captivating people across the globe. I mean, they have to have a reason, evidence to do to go out and arrest him another second time. Saturday afternoon, Memphis Police Department charged 43-year-old Quishon Brown with violation of his bond conditions. That violation? Having another puppy. Police telling Action News 5 the puppy in question now missing. Ginger Natoli with Tales of Hope Animal Rescue says that the idea of Brown having any animal after allegations he intentionally set his own dog, Riona, on fire the night of June 20th is terrifying. So now there's concern with that puppy and what may happen. So we went to Brown's Nutbush address to see if anyone was home and to see if they would talk about the new puppy's whereabouts. Hello, it's Action News 5. I just wanted to ask you a question. People were home but wouldn't open the door to give a comment or their side of the story. 
Meanwhile, Brown's nutbush neighbors are still in shock. He should never have be allowed to have any animal, in my humble opinion. I don't think it's any different than mistreating a child. But in the state of Tennessee, the charge Brown is facing directly related to setting Riona on fire is felony setting fire to personal property. To the Hardisons, it seems like Tennessee law is equating an animal to an armchair, and they want to see change. They're members of your household. You need to treat them like members of your household. And if you mistreat them, then you've mistreated a member of your household, and you should serve, you should be treated the same way as if it was your son or your daughter, and you did that too. In Memphis, Walter Murphy, Action News 5. Now, I'll just lie to y'all just that fast. My fault. I got one more news article. We're going to North Carolina where 40 wolf hybrid dogs were found. But they weren't just found. They was found at a house with an elderly lady. She was injured at that. So they locked the man up who stayed there with her. I'm guessing that was her caretaker or something. They locked him up. But they, they put the dogs down. Say there was 40 wolf dogs surrounding the house. And they say the woman was injured and all that type of stuff. You know, so I'm going to give y'all that article. Let y'all check it out, you know, and have y'all own opinions about it. You know, and then we're going to get into some, some more uh, dog talk and learn a few things together, my brothers and sisters. But y'all check this out. 40 wolf hybrids seized in North Carolina. In North Carolina, authorities say they found 40 wolf hybrid dogs in a home with a seriously injured elderly woman. Well, now that woman's caretaker is charged with abuse of a disabled or elderly person as well as animal cruelty. Officials found the injured woman in the home last month with those 40 dogs. Court documents say she suffered bites from the dogs, none of which were vaccinated for rabies. The sheriff said the deputies found the conditions inside and outside of the home to be what he called uninhabitable for people or dogs. Court documents say the woman's caretaker failed to provide medical care or hygiene for her, and that caused physical as well as mental injuries. A judge ordered the dogs to be euthanized. Now, to my brothers who was uh, asking the questions and looking for the online dog fighting class, you know, um, I'm going to let you know, you know, you, you don't need to be... Uh, uh, afraid of heights and all that type of stuff. The first thing, the first step in that class, first thing you got to do is, you know, join the Air Force. You know, uh, well, join the Air Force, the Navy, and maybe the Army. The, you know, every branch may have their own uh, Air Force pilots, but you got to become a aviator, aviator pilot, you know, in order to take dog fighting online dog fighting classes you know you got to be an aviator pilot you got to be wanting to do some type of flying in airplanes and stuff like that you know so I, i'm just trying to send you into the right direction because uh dog fighting as far as animal dogs you know don't exist dog fighting as far as planes fighting in wars and battles that exists that's reality you know when it comes to online dog fighting classes so if you're looking for online dog fighting classes to learn uh how to dog fight online the first thing you got to do is go join the u.s army the u.s marines the u.s navy or the u.s air force and become an aviator pilot you can't dog fight if you ain't in that cockpit of that plane you know you ain't in that cockpit i don't know what to tell you when it comes to dog fight you know online classes that is online classes no if it was, just to say if it was an online dog fighting class, you know, who would be the teachers? Okay, not even that. What would they tell you? Wouldn't an online dog fighting class be telling you how, like, not to dog fight? How not to go out there and do all that stuff? You know, what would a dog fighting online class tell you? What kind of knowledge could you get? from an online dog fighting class. You see, what kind of knowledge can they, what, what, what can they be telling you besides do not go out there and break the laws? Y'all clearly don't want to hear that because that's why I tell you every dang on day. You know, I tell you that every day and you don't want to hear it. So what you going to online dog cl fighting class for? I know they're not telling you how to go out there and do something illegal with the dog. But ain't no telling what that dog fighting class telling, brothers, because they're making them dog fighting classes up. 
Like I told brothers, in reality, if you want to go to an online dogfighting class, go sign up for the U.S. military. You know, go sign up for the military, and that's your first steps to getting closer to an online dogfighting class. You know, now let's talk about this. All these videos that I showed earlier. Let's talk about the difference between, is there a difference between animal cruelty and dog fighting? You know, we spoke about that a few times on the, in the past videos, but we need to make it clear. You know, is there a difference? These videos that I've been showing y'all brothers, most of them have been animal cruelty. Okay, is there a difference? Animal cruelty is animal cruelty. Dog fighting is animal cruelty, okay? Dog fighting is animal cruelty, but animal cruelty isn't dog fighting. Brothers get charged with animal cruelty all across the country every day. Leaving dogs in hot cars. Leaving dogs in the sun. Leaving dogs without food and water. Leaving dogs in places, nasty areas and stuff like that. Animal cruelty all day, every day. Dog fighting is dog fighting. You know? Dog fighting is dog fighting. Now, a lot of brothers don't get actually caught up in the dog fighting. They get caught with things like medicines, breaking sticks, treadmills, all this other stuff. When you have the other things involved, like the drugs and all this other stuff, then they get that involved. Then they get them. They get dog fighting charges. You know, them not animal animal cruelty charges. They dog fighting charges. You know, um, and this is a difference, man. Uh, and brothers can't try to bamboozle brothers or bamboozle sisters to believe certain things when it ain't true, you know. And when some certain times when brothers start, you get the brothers to you asking these questions and asking certain things, brothers will say certain things that they really shouldn't say, you know. Really shouldn't say. For any brother or any sister across this country to tell me, that they going to an online dog fighting class, I know something ain't right. Now, I ain't saying no names. See, folk will get out here want to say names, but I ain't got to say no names because when you say stupid things, it stands out. Online dog fighting class, my brothers, like I said before, and I can't say it enough as many times. You know, go join the military. And like the brother said on, I seen one brother said on Facebook, you know, and it's a true statement. I like, see, where I come from and, and our black families, and I, we ain't going to preach this to our kids because a lot of our black families preach that going to the military is about like prison. You see? But we ain't going to preach this. Four years in the military can do you better than four years in college. You know? Four years in the military, you know, can do you better than four years in college. Nine times out of ten, I'm talking about when you go to your four years in the military, which you may have to do five, four years in the military is going to set you better in life than four years in college. And that's a proven fact. If the four years is used wisely in college, the four years is used wisely in the military, you're going to benefit more from the military four years in life. That same college degree you needed, you used them four years, you're going to be able to do it with them four in the military when you come back home. And they done figured out you got your honorable discharge or you did your time or whatever in the military, you're still going to be able to get in that same, that same job. You know, unless it's something specifically, you know, that you went to, you know, like a, you know, some type of surgeon. And we're talking about going to 12 years then, you know, and then now you add them 12 years in the military, and you're still coming off better. But anyway, you know, not getting too deep into that, not getting too deep into that. You know, we was talking about animal cruelty, dog fighting, distinguishing the, the difference between the two. Dog fighting, you fighting two dogs. You accused of fighting two dogs. You accused of being in a group of people or a circuit or some type of organization that's going to fight dogs, either now, in the future, or in the past. You know, dog fighting, okay? Now, Animal cruelty, you just went out there and kicked your dog in front of the wrong person and they told on you. Animal cruelty, they videotape you slamming your dog. 
has nothing to do with fighting. It can be a pit bull. It can be a game dog. And you go out there and you punch them the wrong way in front of the wrong person. Animal cruelty. You know, different things. You know, don't get it twisted. When you shoot these dogs with all type of pellet guns and stuff like that, that's animal cruelty. That's not dog fighting. You know, leaving dogs and feces and different things. That's not dog fighting. That's animal cruelty. Dog fighting online classes. That's flying planes. That ain't letting a dog loose between your legs. Learning about nothing about that. You want to, you got to come out at the PBK9 dog talking news. You know what I'm saying? So I can give that dog fighting online classes. You know, like we get every day when I tell brothers, you know, what they call it, staying out the way. Stay out the way. You know what I'm saying? You better be staying out the way. You know? These brothers ain't playing out here with these dogs, man. They jealous. They hating. They doing anything. You know what I'm saying? To, to, to try to get to a spot, like, to an irrelevant spot at that. Brothers want to be the man in these dogs and couldn't, couldn't supply what the man supplied if you got in that spot. You don't got it. You don't got, you know, the demand. Like, nobody don't want your product. And I'm not talking about just anybody. I'm just talking about, you know, a lot of these brothers that do a lot of hating. And like I said, man, you know, I threw a little name Saturday in the, on the, in the Saturday Night Live and stuff like that. But the week goes on, man, you know, uh, the stuff that I make is my content. I don't worry about I wait to the next man to, to make a show or do a show so I can feed off what he's talking about. You know what I'm saying? I don't need to do that. Never did it and ain't going to start it. You know? And, and, and big salute and big shout out to my brothers down in the chat, my sisters down in the chat. Y'all hit that like button up, man. Y'all hit that like button up. Now, we was, I said we're going to talk about Jeep and Hargrove's uh, Outlaw. And the reason why I want to talk about them is because they bred similar but different, you know. And I want to ask brothers, which dog would you rather have the puppies off of? You know, you know, Jeep is coming off Honey Bunch and Finley Bow. And then you got Outlaw, who's coming off of a daughter of Honey Bunch and Rascal, bred back to Finley Bow. See, that's crazy right there. You got Jeep with Honey Bunch and Finley Bow, great producer, champion dog, you know. People would love to breed him any day, hands down. But then you got Hargrove's outlaw over here, who I'm thinking is a grand champion, if I'm not mistaken. Bred with the same mama that Jeep come off of, but Rascal in it. Bred Rascal to Honey Bunch, then bred that female to Jeep's father, Finley Bo. So if Finley Bow producing and if Honey Bunch producing, then they got a spike or something else in it, that rascal stuff that should, you know, throw something else in it. I'm not real familiar with the rascal bloodline brought to the table back then, you know, but it got something else in it to spike it up just a tad bit. So a lot of brothers would say Jeep, but, you know, if you look at Outlaw, I mean, he look, he's they say he's a 42-pound dog, you know, so he's still relatively... You know, medium-sized dog. Um, look like, you know, I, I don't know if if uh, he from the Jeep era as far as, you know, was Jeep still active and was he around? And, you know, was he, you know, could these dogs ever meet somewhere in the square back in the days? A lot of the dogs didn't exist in the same eras. And we're going to get to that as well because I'm going to talk about this time timing thing. Now, what I want to say about this. Outlaw was born in 1979, 45 years ago, okay? 45 years ago, Outlaw was born. Now, is it fair, is it fair for us to ask each other with us, with us trying to do the right things with these dogs, how can you consistently breed uh, good pit bulls, right? If you're not seeing if they game, if you're not seeing if they really want it and stuff like that, right? We ask each other that, right? But have we ever asked each other, how can we breed good pit bulls when we still breeding from traits from 45 years ago? 
It's nothing for a brother to say Jeep or Outlaw and they what they got or what kind of what's that? What kind of daughter is Jeep though? Okay. Forty five years ago plus. Outlaw born in seventy nine. You know? And I'm not sure if who was born first between him and Jeep, but he born in seventy nine. Is it fair to say you still carrying them traits 45 years from now, producing dogs like that when you tell me what kind of dog you got? What kind of dog you got, brother? Um, hard grows outlaw. You know, hard, heavy hard grows outlaw. Uh, what kind of dog is that? And then you tell me the stuff that outlaw was doing or the things outlaw was known for and his, his direct offspring was known for. 45 years later, is it fair for you to tell me that? Can you... Can you um, um, confidently say that these dogs are just like the outlaw dogs from 45 years ago? So if, 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 if you know, we still feeling like we did, we doing our things to carry the trades from then, I don't think, see where something would change at, you know? Because it's like 45 years is a long time for brothers to still be, haven't made a name for themselves yet in modern day time since then. You know, they still have to go drag back to sell puppies off of what Jeep did 45 years ago or what Outlaw did 45 years ago. You can't, you're scared to make names for yourselves and you knock the brothers who tried to, you know. And I clear, brothers try all, and brothers try all kind of ways the knock brothers, and most of y'all brothers do it on the sneak tip. You know, backstabbers on the low, think you're hurting the brothers on the back end. You know, you know, and you're only hurting yourselves. You won't get up there and talk about it like a lot of them brothers do when they be hating on YouTube and this and that. You like to do it on the back end and, and be on the Facebook and think you're hurting somebody with this and that, this and that. Man, listen here. Like I always say, half of y'all don't deserve to have pit bulls. You know, half of y'all don't. Brother asked me did I want a half walking off the rail dog. <laughs> told him I told him I'll take one. <laughs> he waited till they dropped, then he blocked me out. <laughs> Some brothers you just gotta leave in the dark. I ain't want none of that shit, dog. Sorrell's dog ain't said to throw no game in the game list or do what Sorrell's gonna do for my blood. You don't even know what kind of traits Sorrell's dogs carry. So you did me a favor. You know, you did me a favor. When I think Sorrell, I think Rockwaller. You know. <laughs> it just is what it is, man. It is what it is. But going back to 79, you know, now, if Outlaw was born in 79, you know, and then you go way back into his his pedigrees and you see Boudreaux's Scrub and, and the Boudreaux's Booze Dog or Bowes Dog, when were, when were they born? And how can we ever mention and say, oh, I got a tight scrub dog or I got a heavy Boudreaux Scrub dog. If, if, if Outlaw is 45 years old, Scrub them got to be at least 50-something to 60 years old at this point. Y'all brothers just can't let go of the past to the, the, the take a grip of the future. You know, that's one of the first things brothers got to do in order to save this breed, in order to keep breeding great dogs. You got to let that past go. That that shit too, too, too far along go, man. You know? Half the dogs that got confiscated over the last 20 years. That that and the papers, like I said before, the papers still floating. The dogs been gone. A lot of these traits that you're looking for ain't in these dogs because the dogs really not coming off the papers. You know, a lot of brothers got the dogs that's bred the way they're supposed to be bred. I'm not speaking on that, but I'm speaking on uh, all these dogs that been confiscated from the last since 2004. 2004 is 2024. Out of all them dogs that been confiscated, 
You got papers that's floating, floating, floating. Brothers that's looking to, and hungry for this money. And they're going to keep that thing flowing. They're going to give you whatever kind of dog you want it to be. And it just is what it is, man. You know, it is what it is. Brothers got to hope they got stuff that's bred off what we think is bred off of these days. You know what I'm saying? And and like I said, if Outlaw born in 79 and Scrub and Bo and Bowles is in his fourth and fifth generation, you know what I'm saying? Why are these dogs still being mentioned in modern days time? Has no brothers made marks? Y'all quick to down what brothers get up and give you their stories. Y'all quick to down them. But if y'all was making some names and brothers was really bulldogging, it should have been a lot of um, foundation dogs from the early 2000s, late late, 1900s, late 1999, 98, and stuff like that. You know, that we we not even talking about Jeep them no more. Not even talking about Red Boy them no more. You know, although, yeah, they coming off these dogs. But if these dogs made a name for themselves in that in that way, you know, we won't be mentioning all that stuff. Red Boy from the 70s. I mean, we all do it. I say something about Red Boy dogs. We all say something about Red Boy dogs. But these dogs from the 70s, man. Let brothers make names for themselves or, or y'all keep doing what y'all do. You know, and really, you're just confusing yourselves because you're looking for red boy traits. We got to make sure somebody carrying red boy traits from 50 years ago when red, boy was, when red boy was born. I'm 45. Red boy was born at least, you know, a few years before. Before uh, I tell you what, if, I, if I'm 45, red boy was born in the, in the 70s. I ain't sure exactly what, uh, we some mystery on them. Nobody don't know when he born, you know. For the person that can get up here and tell us when Red Boy was born, we'd love to talk to you. You know, we'd love to talk to you. But, hey, man, it just is what it is, you know. Why, you know, are we get doing the, are we doing harm to the dog game by still holding on to these dogs from 50 years ago? You know, and every brother who been bulldogging in the 90s, most of the brothers tell you that the dog quality ain't the same quality of the dog that you got right now. No matter what the bloodline was, all the dogs was on different quality. The Midnight Cowboy dogs were different. The Red Boy dogs, the Jeep dogs, the, the, the Jocko dogs, the Eli dogs, all the dogs were different qualities than what they is right now. So, you know, are we doing the dog game any justice? Even when the Wild Wild West from the, the late 90s to now. So we can't knock what brothers try to do by doing the right things. You can't do no more, no, no worse than what you already did. You're going in a downward, in a downward angle already. So anything a brother can do to keep you from going in a downward angle is going to be helped with this pit bull game. And, 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 and one thing that will help this pit bull game from going in a downward angle is to stop as many confiscations stop people from losing their dogs you know what i'm saying then you can kind of stop it and get at least keep it going level you know as long as people losing their dogs when they get caught up with all this other stuff this and that and this and that and this and that the dog game going in a downward angle you're losing bloodlines you're losing the originals you're losing them you're losing the main dogs you know the dogs that you need and then because of money, because of greed, brothers put dogs in these spots to replace these dogs and never tell the brothers that they're selling these dogs too. So now you leave, you happy, you think you got a Jeep dog, but you got a dog that this brother got a dog pound connect, so they ain't got to get them spaded and neutered, and he brought them home, to, to, uh, papered them up, or either he got a dog from one of his homeboys that occurred out or something, papered them up. I got some, I got some uh, papers at the house you know what I'm saying? That this, this, this that work on this dog. The mold him, I got him. I fix him up and I sell him. You know what I'm saying? Now he sell him off as a, a red boy, a Jeep dog, and a dog is an epinet dog coming off that rat dog. You know, bloodline going a whole nother direction left. But in your mind, you think you got this, 
and, it, and and then you pass it down to the next brother you breed to or him pass it down to the next brother he breed to and y'all continue to think it is what it is but the line is so far from what it was so you know um we I don't think we can you know and, and another another um thing brothers have a misconception of that these brothers that do these shows dogs are not as game as y'all dogs. See, in these shows, they don't want you to bring a dog that's not game. Only thing you getting better in the show, the difference between that show and the, the square is going to be that your dog in that show has got good confirmation. And it got to it gotta be the same style of dog. You know, same style of dog. There's no difference in the game. Is oh your dog's more gamer because they about he be or doing something with this and this man in the show. Man, that's a myth, man. Them dogs are the same dogs, the same people breeding them. If your dog just got to have good confirmation to compete in them shows. So if your dog don't got confirmation or good confirmation, you'll say try to make it seem like oh your dog is more gamer than them brothers over here dog. When in actuality, y'all got the same dang on dogs. It's just what brothers choose to do with their dogs. You know what I'm saying? That's all it is to it, man. You know, that's all it is to it. But which one would y'all rather have the most? I've seen a lot of brothers say Jeep down in the chat. See brothers say um, Outlaw down in the chat. You know? Which one would you rather have? And to all my brothers that's bulldogging, man, don't let nobody tip, don't let nobody stop you from trying to make a name for your dog. You know what I'm saying? But um, you know, at the end of the day, it's just like we always say, a lot of folk don't supposed to have bulldogs. You know, and too many folk got them that don't supposed to have them, and that's where you get a lot of problems at as well. They don't understand the basics, they don't understand the fundamentals of that thing, and it just, it just, you know. They, they're willing to, to, to tear somebody down because they don't know the fundamentals and they don't know the basics. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day. And because a lot of them brothers ain't never been in the dog game, they don't understand the importance of the dog news, you know, on certain uh, standpoints. You know what I'm saying? They don't understand the importance. And they get up on these platforms across different, different you no know, little websites and start speaking about things they don't know what they're talking about, you know? Don't know what they're talking about, man. But like I say, I'm repping the Bay, man, because a lot of brothers don't rep the Bay. You know, the Bay been repping a lot of brothers over the past. I, I'm repping my damn self for now. You know what I'm saying? Every man for himself, do it, do it how you got to do it. Live it how you got to live it. Get it how you got to give it. You know what I'm saying? I, all I can do is me, man. Because at the end of the day, I, like I said, you can't make nobody support you. You know what I'm saying? You can't make nobody help you. You know, you just got to pay attention to things and move how you move and, and play your cards to win. You know what I'm saying? Play your cards to win at the end of the day. You know, um, and, and don't take no prisoners. You know what I'm saying? Don't take no prisoners and don't trust nobody. Like the brother say, you know, you don't trust your damn self 100% of the time because you never know when you're going to do something that you ain't thought you was going to do. You know what I'm saying? It could be snapping, flipping, anything. You might be thought you was going to react this way, and now you're reacting this way. You know, PBK9's dog talking news, man. Y'all stay safe out there. Y'all stay legal out there. And remember, you know, take care of them animals, take care of them hounds. And if you're in the path of them hurricanes, y'all stay safe as well. I'm out.